to be here blessed to be here thank you for welcoming me big d ain't no problem man welcome to mogul state of mind man um you know it, it, it always feel good to you know reach out to up and coming artists yeah. you know share this platform um because i know it's it's kind of hard sometimes if you ain't always where you need to be people don't want to give you a chance and hey big d you got the highest form of my admiration because i've been following your platform since since the beginning yeah like since Say cheat since since Sean Cotton when you used to uh, throw the the kickbacks. Yeah, I've been following since then. We go way back since like 2015, 2016. Yeah, that's, that's about right. Yeah. yeah. No man, I appreciate the support, man. Yeah. Um, right now there's a lot of things to unpack right now, but you you're a Dallas native. Yeah, I'm from Oak Cliff. From the Cliff. I'm from Oak Cliff. Hey man, Oak Cliff is probably the most popular neighborhood yeah. in Dallas right now, man. Kind of. Tell me where you grew up in Cliff, man, and what was the yeah, upbringing uh, like? Yeah, Oak Cliff is like the Dallas is the heart of Texas. Oak Cliff is the heart of Dallas, and where I'm from, best for less, that's the heart of the Cliff. Like that's like the main part of of Oak Cliff. That's where uh, that's where your Williams Chicken, your uh, your Selma Eleven, the Lead Better, you yeah. know, Sunnyvale, you know. But we creep all the way down. To Overton too, like it re it reached kind of far, you know. So what streets border? How do you know you enter into that zone? What streets? You you know by the uh by your people around you, it's, you're not gonna be a foreign person, you know, walking around the hood. You know, pretty much everybody know you. It's 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 kind of the same thing with music. No matter how big I get, yeah, I'm still Lil John John to them. I'm still gonna be Lil Quincy, Lil Fella, always. You know? Yeah, but like you said, best for less is the heart of the cliff. Yeah. How do you know you, what area in the cliff, like what, is it branched off by streets, apartments? Like how do you know you're in the best for less area when you inside Oak Cliff? You know you in the 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 best for less area. Okay, best best for less was a store okay. back in the day where, you know, where they used to hustle it. Got you. And it's, uh, it's on a specific street. So and it, it's pretty much like all the hustles, you know, it was a uh, kind of a quote, you know, yeah. we, we, we the best for less, you know. Got you. So that area came off the store. And so, and okay, I got off, you. Off the hustle. Got the name, you. The, the name of the hood came off the hustle. Got you. Yeah. Um, For most people who know when they hear of Oak Cliff, they think of Trap Boy Freddie. Yeah. Um, Some may think of Yellow Beezy, although, you know, Yellow Beezy, Holly Hills. And yeah, but Oak Cliff, yeah, Oak Cliff is, is, is large. You know, yeah. Oak Cliff is not just, you know, like a little small town. Oak Cliff is, you know, large. You got various sides of Oak Cliff. Yeah. What 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 do Trap Boy Freddie mean to the Cliff? Does Trap Boy really get that much love? Trap out there? Boy Freddie is uh is actually one of my idols. Mm. Uh, I look up to Trap Boy Freddie. Uh, when Trap Boy Freddie, I always wanted to be like Trap Boy Freddie. When he dropped Lil Quita and showed me that he could go on the world tour, yeah, that just broadened my horizon. I'm like, okay, yeah, now he reaching different plateaus. You know, you know what they call gatekeeping. Yeah, for sure. Um. So best for less growing up, what what was it like for Lil Quincy in that neighborhood? What tell me about your upbringing? Well, uh, my upbreak upbringing is kind of very traditional. Uh, I was raised by my grandmother. Uh, pretty much everyone around is pretty much was raised by their grandparents in that in that area because people the residents there. It wasn't like residents was just moving in. People have been there for several years at a time so pretty much the uh the foundation come came from like our, our grandparents and that's the that's, that's where we was raised at got you and it just so happened to be Dallas Texas and with with Oak Cliff I like to say it's a it's a universal hood if you can make it in Oak Cliff I feel like you can make it in Compton you can make it in uh 63rd you can make it in uh you south side Atlanta, Georgia, you know, where wherever it's rough at, you know. It's, People in them hoods may smack their lips like whatever. So what what makes you think why could if you can make it in Oak Cliff, you can make it anywhere? What what about Oak Cliff that make you feel like it will make toughen you up to survive anywhere? Because you know, it's like uh it's it's a fight for survival. You know, everybody around is is, you know, fighting for opportunity. And with that being said, you know, you it, it get cutthroat. Yeah. You know, to to elevate. You'll cut out the next man that's, that's next to you, you know, and it, it becomes a, a common thing. So if you can survive that, you know, coming up, 
you, you could pretty much make it anywhere. Got you. Now, you said your grandmother raised you. Why not your parents? Well, uh, like, my, par- my parents were uh, around, but, you know, sometimes in- inside the house, it, it could, that was, that was one of those things that is it's kind of tough to talk about. Like when you were a kid, you want your parents to be together so bad. Like you wanna them, you just wanna be a complete whole family. And with life, you know, it's it's like a dream, you know, it's not that's not really reality, you know. Yeah. Thing things happen, you know, with inside life. Uh my mother, uh, she was a staple in the community as well. She used to work on people's campaigns and, you know, get them elected for office and and things like that. But uh, as she got older, uh, her mental health began to deteriorate. Okay. And, you know, she, sometimes uh, it would begin to get hard on my father, you know, to try to support the whole family. And with my grandmother being who she was, she was a staple in the community. You know, Miss Harris, everybody know Miss Harris, you know, on, on the front street. You know, she had a, a good reputation for being a good person. You know, she was like royalty. You know, it's like I was born into royalty with 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 my grandmother. And, you know, she would have, she welcome anybody, you know, no matter who you was. And she did a lot of counseling as well. Okay. So w- with your mom, mental health deterior- deteriorating, yeah. um, and you having to go live with your grandmother, and you saying it was hard for your dad to do it by himself. How, how many siblings were there? Uh, I'm the youngest of four siblings. Okay, the youngest of four. Now, did all four of y'all go stay with your grandma or just you? Uh, not not exactly. Uh, we we li- we lived together at, at, at moments of time, but like everybody, not not just my family, you know. Like I'm saying, Grandma welcomed her house to pretty much everyone, you know, including immediate family. So growing up inside Grandma's house, you may live with a cousin, you may live with an aunt, you may live with an uncle. You know, everybody has, you know, yeah, pretty much used Grandma's house as a stepping stone. Yeah, you know, that's all our that's all our origin. You know, we love her. So. Your grandma you were staying with, this is your dad's mom. This is my mom's mom. Your mom's mom. Okay. So your mom and dad had four kids together and you were the youngest? Uh my dad had a, my dad had a son and my mom had a daughter. And uh I got the, me and my brother have the same mom and dad. Okay, so okay, so your parents together got two two children together. Yeah. So both you and your brother wouldn't live with your grandmother? Yeah. Okay, got you. That was like that was like my running mate, you know. We we thick and thick as Steve. You see me, you see him. What was it about your mom? Did you when you start to realize like her mental health wasn't all the way there? Just uh, yeah, it, it's part of my testimony. Who wants to get forgetting to get picked up from school? Mm-hmm. You know, like you you wait you a kid and you waiting for somebody to pick you up from school and it's rolling around. It's eight o'clock. It's nine o'clock. Still ain't nobody picked you up and you like damn. You know. Wow, got you. So. With that, so you you growing up with your grandparents. At what age do you move in with your grandparents? Mm, I say about we was out. We was, you know, my, I was grandma baby. You yeah, know, I, uh, I was always, you know, up on the grandma's wing. You pretty, you me and grandma was inseparable. You, uh, so probably early early on, you know, I live I lived in grandma house pretty much majority of my life. Got you. So coming up, man, like. Dealing with what you going through, what you going through with your parents, was your relationship with your dad good? Like, what was that like? Yeah, my dad is. Uh, my dad is. He he would. He's also a mentor. So is we always have had a great relationship. You know, a great bond. He's always been there for me. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, he's un, He can understand me because we're practically the same person. Yeah. Had you ever saw like you living with your granddad? But your dad living and he got his lady and her kids be over there. Did you ever have to deal with that? Yeah, like I would see a lot of wild shit growing up, you know, especially this this Texas and you know, it's it's we in the South. You know, anything you could think of on a uh dysfunctional level, it was going on and I, and I saw it. But what about like now that you're an adult? Like, had you ever had like that heart to heart conversation with your dad? Cause it seemed like you will feel some type of way like yeah, I'm with grandma, and grandma giving me the uh, love. Like that is, is who he is, and he tried. He was trying the best that he could, okay. and you know he always went great lengths on, on my behalf. You know, for example, it was a it was a AAU trip to uh, to Las Vegas, and I was trying to go on this trip, and you know really didn't know how I was gonna go. You know, I watched my dad, you know, go through links to you know 
put me on that plane and make sure that I had fun. Got you. Oh, how did you get to music? Well, what introduced you to hip hop and the style of, well, the style of music that you do and it getting into that phase? So how do you get into it? Well, with music, music is an expression, you know. Music is, is how you feeling. And, you know, we tend to feel different every day. The unique thing about music is it, it resonates it, it resonates with a memory. So each song there is is, is gonna come back with with a feeling, and you know we we feel different from time to time. But our favorite songs comes with the ones that give us the best feelings. Got you. If you can kind of like define the, the style of artist that you are, how how would you define your sound for those who may never heard of you? Uh, it's pretty much like the the modern day sound, the the singer songwriter sound, and kind of mesh together. But at the same time, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm versatile. You know, we could switch it up. You know, I think I bring something very unique to the game that that pretty much the industry really hadn't saw. Like what? Uh, like how charismatic I am, how poetic I am. Mm-hmm. You know, and at the same time, so authentic and 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 raw. You know. Got you. Um, I, I want to get into current topics since you you own that. Singing, the singing, songwriting, melody type of style. Mm-hmm. Um, recently, Chris Brown, a, a, a dude took his girl to a Chris Brown show. Oh, wow. Okay. Or was it Usher? I, I saw that. It was Chris Brown. And Chris the, Brown. The girl, the girl dan- uh, Chris Brown danced on the girl he broke up with her. Yeah. So the dude, these front row seats, Yeah. Chris Brown brings up on the stage. He give her a lap dance. Yeah. Dude breaks up with her. What, what's your position on that? I mean, I saw this on like a Boondocks episode where it talked about uh, Tom Wife's, he, his wife had a crush on Obama. Like, why would you introduce your wife to somebody that got more money than you, more power than you, do everything better than you? Why would you put your woman in front of you set yourself up for that? Front row, Chris Brown, you know what? what? You asking for that, man. I, I guess maybe you front row. Maybe he thinking like I'm taking her a good time. She up close, but not of Chris all Brown people. got a song that say these hoes ain't loyal. What's wrong with you, man? You right. big for that? I, I mean, I feel <laughs> it. But what I'm saying is, he probably thinking like, what's the chances of her getting chosen out of all the people in the front row man. that come up on stage? You just thinking like, yo, you so know, you I'm think he taking some bucket head to go see Chris, Chris Brown charging them girls a thousand dollars for a meet and greet. And then you know he sells out, so you know his ticket price is high. I'm pretty sure he ain't taking no book. No, he ain't taking. I'm saying this is his girl. She might have been a yeah, fan. Yeah, so she was probably nine times out of ten, she was cute. But I'm just then saying. Chris Brown don't even let. I, I, we just allegedly yeah. he don't let the dark skinned girls in his section. But I, I mean, I get it. I'm just saying from the guy perspective. Yeah. He probably don't even know Chris Brown set. He probably don't even think there's there's a lap dance segment. In the concert, yeah. Well, I, he, I would not just thinking, like he I, probably I, thinking yeah. like I'm just not gonna get her to meet and greet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We just gonna come here, have a good time, watch the show. Chris might be gyrating or whatever. She probably over there. What's the, I'm like, what's the chances of of that? What's the chances of, that Chris Brown just wanna have a lap dance session? Yeah, you know. And it, did he, did he rehearse that? Like, I don't think that he rehearsed it. That, that might be a set. That might be a point in his set that he picked somebody from the crowd. Oh, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? And bring them on the stage. I mean, we saw Jenny Jackson. She used to do lap dance sets at her show. Yeah. But was the boyfriend right for breaking up with her? Is that an end-all, be-all for getting that lap dance? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if that's your girl, you done brought her up there. You know, this this shit, you know what I'm saying? It didn't, it didn't hit the internet. That's your girl. You standing by, that's your girl. You supposed to... You know, y'all go talk that out and try to make that work. But at the same time, if you just tricking your money and just bought this girl up here, <laughs> and then that's what happened. That's what you get. <laughs> yeah. Do you think, as the dude, bring his chick to a show. Mm-hmm. At any point, should a dude be able to pull your chick? I don't care who it is. Be able to pull your chick at any point to do a grind on her. Man, that's the thing. We got free will. We can't control what nobody do. Like for instance, we're not talking about controlling. So we're like, just talking just, about morals and ethics regarding a relationship. 
with, with with physical attraction, bro. Like if you see somebody that's attracted that you attracted to or they attracted to you, you you can't necessarily. What, what can you do? It's gonna be I'm, awkward. I feel it. But your expect it's okay. You know you can't control anybody, but you do set expectations. Yeah. Him sitting next to his girl, Chris Brown points at the girl. I choose you. <laughs> Is there a moment where they connect eye to eye and he looking at her and she looking at him? Do she say, like, fuck it, I'm going so, to get so this lap so dance. Hold on, hold on. So was he supposed to say, nah, hell no, bitch, don't go up there. Don't go up there, bitch. <laughs> I, it it, it should have been an eye contact lock that know, like, without verbal ex- words, you know where I stand. Yeah. Take your ass on that stage if you want to. Mm. You know how, like, you could give your chick or your kids a certain look and they know... Yeah. Nah, I ain't gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? You give them that certain look. Yeah. They must have had to lock eyes. Or, <laughs> nigga, she even look at his her, her dude. As soon as Chris Brown said, I choose you, she must have been on the stage ASAP. I mean, but dude kind of played his cards right. Because if I'm in that situation, yeah, I let her go up there. You know, the inevitable happened. She, he danced on her. Yeah, I break up with her. But look. This hit the blows, you know. Now, now I got a little clout. You know what I'm saying? I can get a new girlfriend to take her to the Chris Brown concert. Yeah, you know. So he's city boys up a thousand. Which which situation is worse for the dude? Chris Brown bringing the chick on the stage and giving her a lap dance, and the dude breaking up, or the one dude's dissing Drake, trolling Drake, and Drake start DMing his wife. Ooh, that's terrible. That's terrible right there. You said which one is worse? Yeah, which one is worse? The jerk situation, definitely worse. She probably got that DM, like, archive somewhere in the home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Always so. You know, women spite for R. Kelly when a woman (laughs) said, nah, you know, said. No. Um, As an up-and-coming artist, man, you know, internet presence is big. Mm. Um. Engaging with your fans is big. Looking a certain way is big. Yeah. And so now Blue Checks has been opened up to anybody that got four, $14.99 a month yeah. to get a Blue <laughs> Check. How do you feel about the Blue Check verification and being accessible to everyone? I mean, with, uh, with the entertainment industry, it's all, I like to compare it to uh, like a race or like a sprint. Uh like kind of like track, we all at different dispositions, but it's a matter, of, you know, we gotta we gotta finish. It's about who who finished first. Like with this blue check, it pretty much put us all like on the same level. You know, pe- people used to look at it like, oh, I got a blue check now, I'm doing better than you. Yeah. But at the same time, I I didn't saw people with blue checks like, damn, he got a blue check. I should have a, I should have a blue check. You know, but shit, now that you know, it's 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 accessible. You know, like what what it is, it's the cliche. The game is to be sold and not told. Well, now you ain't gotta, you know, find out how to uh, how to get a blue check. You can just go buy it. Yeah. Technically, people were always most people were always buying them anyway. Yeah. Because although to get a blue check was free, yeah. it was a process, right? You yeah. have to get so many publications, and not only just regular pub- publications. Like somebody think like, oh, let me just pay the Source magazine. Yeah. And. Yeah, but see, that's that, that's a that's a better that's a better route. Like I'm saying, like you know, run run your race. You know, it's supposed to it's supposed to happen to you. Yeah, you know, you can't just skip the process. You know, like the the internet gonna know that the internet always trying to look to expose you. So if you just skipping the process, you know, like how did he get here when he was just here? You know, that you know that's gonna bring people questions. Yeah, questions up. Then at the same time, like you got a goal that you're trying to reach. Most artists are trying to get get signed or, or get some type of deal. And, you know, they all the people that's, uh, that's giving deals, they checking those numbers. So when they check your numbers and they, they seeing that it, that your engagement's not matching up, they thinking you cheating. They don't trust you. Mm. So you okay with everybody having access to the blue check mark? Does that water down the value of the blue check mark? Nah, like it it authenticated. You know, now I know who you who you actually are. You know what's crazy? Cause I've been, you know, it's propaganda. They always put this shit in front of us. But what I've been seeing is, uh, they really trying to, they really trying to catch, trying to catch you slipping. You know, if you doing something illegal and putting it on there, that's your real name. That's your ass. You done built the case against yeah. yourself. You got evidence. You know, like with rappers, like I really don't listen to rappers because, 
you know, if you take away a rapper tattoos and take away his dreads, take the goals out of his mouth, you know, who is he? I mean, that's you I mean you take away LeBron, his ability to jump, his ability to shoot, nah, his ability. Nah, you LeBron, take away- LeBron worked hard. We're not gonna discredit LeBron because what, what I'm saying he, he is didn't work, we didn't work hard for it. Uh, somebody who ain't just you, somebody who just went in the studio, made a, you know a couple songs, and you know, and pretty much paid their way up. You know, it's not the same as somebody. Who I mean, but LeBron had to pay his way up, right? Yeah, they had the right trainers. Like the average, LeBron had access to to private. Although he was from the hood, yeah. somebody spent money for him to go to a private school. Dad, the right trainers. LeBron to be had around. to. LeBron had to earn it. But, you know. You know. With, with that being said, like. But what I'm saying, oh, was like, what I'm saying is, although you have to earn it, just because you spend money doesn't negate what you earned. Because spending money, what it does is it introduce you to. It makes your path a little bit smoother. It mm-hmm. gets you, it makes you work smarter and not harder. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you got the money yeah. to go be in the studio with money always make the situation better. It's yeah, so cause like if you got the money and you can go in the studio and do a feature with Gucci Man. Right. Versus no money and you just gotta rap and hope it go viral, mm-hmm. you can't say this dude who had the money to pay for a feature. Didn't work hard. Somebody be like, oh, he got a Gucci Man feature. That's why he popped off. No, that man worked for his money, yeah, put himself it. in position. He earned it. So I just don't want to create the narrative because somebody has some what, money what, or able to pay. What the blue check is, people are seeking validation. For sure. They want the uh, they want the validity of fame. Absolutely. You know, they want to be, be somebody. Right. But the only way that you are somebody is if the people say you, who you are. Yeah, in entertainment for sure. Yeah, in entertainment, this shouldn't govern your you as a person. Like a blue check mark shouldn't validate who your grandma knows or who your family yeah. knows. Because me, me personally, my favorite part about about being an artist is the actual fan engagement. Yeah. Re- reintroducing myself to people who who've never met me. You know, it's their first time. First impression is the best impression. So you always win when new fans there. Then at the same time, you got people who've been knowing you for a while. You know, I really hadn't met a person that I hadn't impacted. You know, that's part of just part of my gift. So what do you say, like, for somebody like LeBron, mm-hmm. where at first Twitter was grandfathering. Everybody who had a blue check mark, they was going to, a verification mark, they was going to leave them. Right. But starting this month, Regardless if you had it before or not, if you don't pay the eight dollars a money month, for it, they gonna take it. LeBron said he ain't paying nothing. Yeah. And so here it is, a person of this caliber refusing, a billionaire essentially refusing to pay eight dollars. Whereas a person who probably don't even have two hundred dollars in savings is willing to spend the fourteen ninety nine or eight dollars okay. on Twitter to get well, verified. It's, okay, it's kind of like the blue check is a stamp on the brand. With LeBron, we already are, are, f- are familiar with who LeBron is. But to a brand that's coming up, you don't really know who that that brand is unless you follow them. So if you got that blue check, you got that you got that stamp like yeah. you got that vali- validity. 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 I got you. <laughs> so what happens now cuz paying the 14.99 on Instagram don't mean you blue check forever. Right. This is a new subscription bill that got to be maintained every month. What percentage of your blue checks that you see this month, you think in four months won't have blue checks because they stop paying? That's what I'm saying. Like LeBron brand can hold up without a blue check because we already we already familiar with yeah. who he is. But at the same time, you know, someone up and coming, you know, you don't know who that person is. So if this person wants to be somewhat credible, you're going to need that blue check. And the more that you don't need the blue check, the more that, that kind of your stock kind of rises. You know, you don't... But what I'm saying is those people who feel like they need the blue check, if they stop paying the fourteen ninety nine, the blue check goes away. Man, that's going to be a pretty bad look. If you've been paying for that blue check and then you don't pay for it and they snatch your shit. That's like, that's like a rapper getting his chain snatched. <laughs> 
Oh, oh shit. <laughs> hey, that's a good, that's a good, good analogy. They snatch your, they snatch your motherfucking blue, uh, blue check now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ain't paid for your shit. But that's real. So, like, what percentage by month three, let's say by June, all these people buying blue check marks, what percentage do you think going to stop paying? It goes back to the cliche. The game is to be sold and not told. Like, them people are profiting off these people yeah. wanting to be famous. So, I think like 700 million, something crazy in the first month after start selling blue chips. Yeah, chain. somebody, somebody rich. Somebody use some somebody use somebody else for capital gain. Hey, we all do. That's the name of the game. That's how you make money. That's how you do it. It's, for sure. Now, gatekeeper season is here. Mm-hmm. I'm getting ready to drop the new gatekeeper list here, so. Yeah, that's cool. It's always dope. Like, and then to like to see those people and you know, to reach out to those people or even just I, I respect all the, like, part of my brand is the low-key celebrity. So when you be putting those gatekeeper lists together, it's kind of like, okay, this person low-key celebrity, this person low-key celebrity. Yeah. What do you feel like the role that you would like to see gatekeepers do more? Like, what do you, because I see you at the events. At the events, You be at yeah. the events. That was going to be you my response, the, the events. The mm-hmm. events. You think it need to be more events? More, more events, more exclusive, you know, like mm-hmm. actually send out invitations, you know, okay, we, we got the gatekeeper list, but look at the people that be like, I'm talking about being an artist, you know, we, we, uh, engagements is big. Like, look at the comments, look at the people in the comments and, you know, if they, if they on the grind, they have emotion, exclusively send them an invitation to, you know, some type of networking event, you know. You you feel like that's what artists should do to the gatekeepers or the gatekeepers the should gate, artists. The gatekeepers should, you know, do it to the artists just to keep just to keep the uh the thrive in the music scene. Yeah. I got you. Okay. So be more but that's kind of tough, right? Cuz I mean it's a lot of up and coming artists mm-hmm. to try to send something exclusive to. Mm-hmm. Um who do you feel like is one of the gatekeepers that you feel like work hard that you really follow mm. and think they do a good job. Uh uh E C E O on Boss Talk. Okay. He's pretty good. Uh you know, I've seen a lot of various people on his channel. Uh Jam Visions, Cam God. Okay. He's pretty good. Uh Half Pints. Half Pints pretty good. Out in the streets, Mr. Hit That is definitely Yeah. Mr. Hit That is definitely that guy. You know, he's always connecting connecting people. Uh, BC. Okay. BC Newton, uh, Southern Fried Marketing. Uh, I mean, pretty. I got I got a good relationship with, with several gatekeepers. Speaking of uh, Half Pint, he, mm-hmm. he did the doing the Up Next yeah. series that gave artists a chance. Kind of like bringing like an American Idol style. Yeah, like The Voice or yeah, something yeah, like, like that. Bringing that to it. Did you participate in the Up Next? Well, I... To be honest, if I'm being completely honest with myself and being with everybody, I'm not ready yet mm. as a, as an artist because you know I got I pretty much got my hands in all all entertainment you know to just focus on one thing you know you got people who just solely rap and like just dedicated to rap so if I'm gonna try to uh, you know you gotta I just don't think that I was ready yet yeah um. We we look at a place right now with the gatekeepers, but mm-hmm. from your audience standpoint, how can people support artists better? Because we hear it all the time in the city, like, hey, man, support artists. People ain't supporting. Yeah. People hating. You, how do you support artists? You got to find like-minded people. I'm very introverted, you know. Sometimes I don't even like to talk to people or deal with people because they think so small, so minuscule. So I have trouble sharing my dreams with them. And... You got to find like-minded people like that think like you think. You know, if you're in a room full of people and you uh you're in a room full of people and you you have to get in where you fit in. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're at the bottom of, of the list, you know, you have to find a different room of people. Yeah. Now, before we end, I I want to touch on this subject. What's up? So me and Rainwater had a conversation. Yeah. And we talked about what's a good price for good quality ass. 
AKA Trick, and we the Trick Bros. <laughs> what is your take on tricking? Man. Paying for the cat. Pimp C will roll over his grave. He knew you niggas was just paying for ass like that. You know, like I ain't never had no problem getting chose. I ain't never, I ain't never paid for no ass. Like, funny story, Big D. I, I mean, my partner at Bucks, but shit, he sent me his location. And I fucked around and went to the Wildnut Hill across the street. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's where the hoes at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm drinking, I'm shooting the shit. You know what I'm saying? With my partner, I'm drinking, drinking at Remy and shit. And shit, we see some little hoes, you know what I'm saying, on the strip. So I'm like, hey, you know what I'm saying? What's up? You know what I'm saying? She like, you know what I'm saying? Pull up. So I pull up. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm, talk I'm talking to her. Then like this S550 come out. And this, you know, this little Lloyd looking dude, like, Cat Williams looking dude jumped out. He got on all black. He flies the motherfucker. Like, like what you doing, youngster? Like, shit, fucking with the hoe, what it look like? He was like, yeah, I can see that. What you doing? You tricking or you pimping? It's like, what? Nigga, I'm doing both, nigga. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> he said, what, youngster? I ain't never heard no shit like that, man. You got to get your young flies so out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't never had... I ain't never had that problem. I ain't never looked at a girl and like tried to put a price on her body. You know, like that's just. Yes, you do. You're lying. You meet a girl and you pull her off of your charm and your suave. Yeah. Let's go to dinner. You think about her mm -hmm. first date. How much is she worth me spending on this first date? Do you take her straight to Albernay's, a five star restaurant? It's the only worth TGIF Fridays. Say, you know what? I'm glad that you said that. Because I have taken what people consider bad bitches, no disrespect, bad bitches, I have taken them to eat TD's barbecue, chopped beef sandwich. It, it doesn't matter where you took them. What I'm saying is you looked at them and you, desi you decided a value of what you were willing to spend on them. Man, you pay I, for that time. Regardless of how you want to spend look, it. Look, look. You can have all the money in the world, but you can only be at one place at one time. So if I'm spending time with you, that's way more valuable than money. You know what I'm Thank saying? Thank you. So now you see why we trick. Because we don't want to spend time with you. Because our time is more valuable. If, you're, if I know I don't have to try to talk to you and charm you to get what I'm trying to get, how much it costs? $300? Cool. Nice. $300? It's no problem to me. 20 minutes. But like then I'm boom, saying, I keep like going. I'm so now I ain't got to worry about calling you. I ain't got to worry about texting you. See how you doing. I don't have to act like I'm See, interested. Like I'm saying, like, None of that. My time is more important. Like, exactly. I ain't got the, I may have the money to waste, but I ain't got the time to waste. So like, if I'm spending that time with you, it's, in, it's important to me because, you know, we can get anything back besides time. Wasted. You know what's crazy though? You can be spending that time with her. Cause yeah. you you wooed her with your charm, yeah. And then Big D or Rainwater hit her phone, text. But but what what you doing? That's cool. That's that's cool you and all. Are, but at the same time, with Big D, like it the the you niggas is paying these girls. Yep. Is because they they have reversed the roles on us, like no. court, courtship, dating. You know, women is seeking men versus you know men chasing the women. Like you niggas just. No, Pay, prostitution is money. The, like I'm the when I, be with, is, when I be with a woman, Big D, I'm the prize. Like if I'm fucking a woman, I'm doing the work. You know what I'm saying? So I should be getting paid. Like you niggas paying the women, you niggas should be making the women pay y'all, support y'all. That's why women. Nah, see, that's that's why much. women have passed. That, that's why women have surpassed men. No prostitution like more, has always been around. That the, ain't that Black new. women are more successful than the men now. Yeah, that's because we in jail. That ain't got nothing to do with paying that's for cause vagina. You, that's because they. We talked about being a capitalist, right? Somebody who going to capitalize off, off the game. Yeah, no. The women are sure. winning. We, uh, I mean, it depends on what you call winning. Look, I, I call it stimulating I, okay. the economy. Me, me as an artist, I don't make music for niggas. You know what I'm saying? Niggas want to opt this, slide that, kill each other, you know. Man, women, you know, they want to listen to things that make them feel good. You know, want to gyrate the body and all, all of that type of stuff. We move off vibrations and frequencies. I think you're getting off topic right now. What I'm saying is, if you value your time, yeah. you pay for the cat. 
But if you're looking for a relationship and love, which is fine, then no, you don't. Because the thing is, we're not paying a chick to like us and to love us and to build with us. Yeah. No, we're just paying to fuck and move on. <laughs> that is it. I'm not paying you to say, here goes a couple of dollars, come to the movies with me. Here yeah. go a couple of dollars, let's go out to eat. No. But you got a lot of guys that you got, got a lot of guys that that do that and get that confused. You know, I'm gonna I'm take it to this restaurant and I'm gonna buy this expensive gift, and you know, she's supposed to it's it's unspoken. Yeah. I mean, but everybody take their chance. Everybody do only what worked for them before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Until it stopped working and then you figure out something else. Yeah, it is a dude out there. I've done it before. You thinking like, okay, I'm going to give you a couple of dollars. Yeah. I'm investing in something. And then ima and imagine you, like you said, you're going to slide in the DMs and, and give her the money. Imagine you giving her the money and she gives it to me. I don't care. I'm trying to, listen, listen. But that's well, it depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking see, that's about- that's something my Uncle Chad would clap for. See, with, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sliding her DM like, what's your cash app? Let me just throw you something. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I need a menu. Like, what, what is it? Yeah. Okay, so you gonna go Maybe all you the done, way? You done, you done been to one of them. You done been to one of them places where they, like where they bring the before. girls out. Yeah, <laughs> and be like, Let me see. but like, I need to know what I'm getting, yeah. and then while I'm there, like, okay, boom, we go and then get it in. I'm not sending you like, a, no, I'm not hitting your DM and then just all of a sudden, what's your cash out? No, if you a chick, that's I feel like we rocking and we vibing. Yeah. And we've been kicking it for a minute. Then I do a little love offering. But that, no, I ain't never did nothing and got nothing. I'm going to just send you something. No, no, no. That's I, Big D don't do that. <laughs> I will never pay for your companionship in regards to. And see, the thing, the thing with women is, like, they say it all the time. Ask a nigga to do something for you and watch his reaction. So you don't want to be, you don't want to be him as soon as I had asked him for some. Shit, he had burnt out on me, you know. Then especially if he's supposed to, you know, have some money, you know. Yeah, I be tired of women who always need help. I try to stay away from them type of women. Like, if you're trying to date, don't date a woman who always lie. need help. Because, <laughs> bro, like, how can you... I mean, you can grow with somebody and she can change her ways yeah. and things of that nature. But, no, you can't date a woman. But I ain't gonna lie. If you do with some hella money... No, you can't. I'm, I'm That's with you. Easy. You can't. You can't. You can't fix a person. Your money can't fix a person. You know, because whatever you know that they dealing with internally, your money really can't necessarily help. Them. But if you building somebody, you building with somebody like you found somebody you rock That's with. Your time. Then you know, if I'm spending you. my time, if I'm spending my time with you, I'm gonna spend my money with you. And yeah, I expect, for sure. I expect, and I expect the same thing from you. You spending your time with you, I expect you to spend your money with me. Okay, so you be expecting the money part. Like that's the thing. Women have women have bought me stuff, bro. Uh, it's not wrong with that. Like the expectation. You niggas be tricking y'all money. money off trying to date women, and it it comes natural. No, but what what I'm saying is, you go into a situation expecting a woman to spend her money on you. Yeah, that's kind of like feminine. Nah, hell no. Nah. Because a man naturally is a provider. Usually, a man want a, a woman that's going to return. Yeah, of feminine, course I'm, yeah, of course I'm with, gonna provide. If I'm with, spending my time with you, we building. But yeah, you but said provider, we just, you but, said you said we just dating. Yeah, but even if we dating, if you're naturally a provider, you're not worried about a chick money. You want some coochie, you want some food, you want your back rub, you chilling. You're not sitting here like I hope she buy me something from the store. Nah, that, hell that, that's nah, what that's, that's what you say. Nah, I hope she, nah. I hope she give the, me some money. Like, nah, hell nah, hell nah. You your generation been nah. raised by your moms, and so the men, when you talking about role reversals, y'all think y'all are alpha males because you letting a woman take care of you and hoping nah. she take care of you. That's what y'all be wanting. But nah, you really like, like okay. hold on, it's, but you really like your moms. You really like your mothers. I ain't gonna lie to you. Me personally, you know, just the, uh, off the last thing you said, me personally, I do have Oedipus Complex. Like, I love women who are... Like motherly, like that's what I'm attracted to. Just that's just my personal. That's preference. what you're supposed to. Yeah, that's but the, the nurturing. Same, but at the same time, am I looking for it after a chick's money? Nah, hell you just no. said you expect her to spend her money on you. I'm spending mine on you. Yeah, but as a provider, that's not what you expecting back. You expecting her to return being a a woman back, and a woman is somebody that's See, nurturing, that's who makes meals, like, who 
who cook and clean, things of that nature. You're looking for somebody who can invest and bring that feminism it's a, to it's you. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be fifty fifty. If we building a foundation, like at any moment, if I do all of the work, I'm gonna constantly remind you, hey, I did all of the work. But you that's know, not but what if, providers do. Providers. 50-50, a provider... Is, Bro, our, a, gr our granddaddies did that. Our granddaddies, they provided and said, I did all of the work, and they went out and they had several different women. That's just because men are naturally polygamous. That ain't got nothing to do they with your they grandma. Pro they provide. If you, if you can provide for more than one woman, you can have more than one that's woman. How it's supposed to, that's nature. That's how it's supposed to be. Oh, man. A provider... And guess what? The woman will let the man go do whatever he's doing out there as long as he is providing. You just can't be a bum-ass broke nigga trying to play that role because it will fold. Like, nigga, you got the audacity to try to be over there playing stepdaddy and your kid is <laughs> struggling over here. Yeah, You see what I'm saying? But if you over here and your chick over here put up, the house paid for, bills good, yeah. she cooking, she cleaning, this straight over here. She cool over here as long as over here don't start messing right. with over here. Take Jay-Z and Beyonce fans. Yeah. Jay-Z has his own accolades. Mm -hmm. You know, he has his own reputation, so forth and so on. But at the same time, Beyonce outsells Jay-Z. Okay. You know, so with that being said, what you mean? You know they built the foundation together. Is he expect? Is he expecting her to spend hers on him? Hers on him? Yeah, we built this. We built this together. We but, what they what they say? What's better than one billionaire? Two. Okay, so if we both put the work in and both put the foundation in, of course I'm I'm accepting I'm expecting you to reciprocate all energy. I I get it. I like with, with tricking is you can't with the game the name of the game with tricking is you can't you shouldn't buy something for somebody that they can't buy for themselves. So let's start over. Let's let's define. Okay, so yeah, define tricking is that's that's what you just saying is yeah. It's buying something for someone. Trick tricking is 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 like what it is like psych, psychology. I'm using my money to I'm using my money to get you tricking. But every male does it. Even if you think you're not giving her cash in hand for something, you're showing her, look, I am responsible well, yeah, and I true, work. True, true, true enough. True enough, because I give gems to women all the time. I give knowledge to them. And that's way more money. That's, you know, that's way bigger than anything that could be monetized. You know, I gave you knowledge. So, But it, whether you give her knowledge, all I'm saying is that at the end of the day, a woman is looking at, first of all, the reason why women look at teeth and shoes and clothes and stuff, this is a snapshot of how healthy you are. This is a snapshot. They look at your that. car to see financially where you may be. Right. And the reason why these things are important is because these things, your health and your financial health is a clue of how financial see, that's stability the thing, that's and security the thing about are. Tricking, you remember I told you I had no problem ever getting chose. Like when you like what you spoke about, when those things are intact, you know your 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 teeth are intact, your your shoe, you got nice shoes, you know you got you make good money, you uh you stable, you know women have no problem choosing you, so therefore that's why you can I get don't chosen. need to I don't need to you might get chosen, but if you don't have the stability part, because remember you're getting chosen off a of snapshot. No woman, want, no woman on, wants to be with an unstable man. Every woman, but. She's choosing you off of snapshots. Okay, he's handsome. He got his hair cut. His teeth yeah. good. He got on decent clothes. These are he snapshots. Dry, yeah. These are snapshots to say he healthy and he might got a little bit of money. All his, of this his, is his lifestyle. And they be the, trying to see where, where do they fit in. Because they care about money. They don't care. Of, it's, this the security and stability comes from money. So when you think you're getting chose and then she get so, with you, hold on. Okay, go ahead. And then your spending habits don't correlate with how you look, mm. you're going to get cheated on by on with a nigga like me. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. So yes, you got chosen. You walking around all oh, King Kong. Oh, I'm the man. They chose me off the look. I ain't have to pay nothing. And then all of a sudden that text message you come through. She's like, oh baby, I got to go to the office. Uh, They they call me in for work. And now she in pound town getting her back blew out. Here go a couple of dollars. I move on. She come back to you. It, it it really just depends on the type of woman. That, oh, of course, we're not that, saying all, not all, not all, but most. Because as you're talking, I'm like, so 
how do you trick your money on a woman that's already established, that she already has something, that she don't need yours? What if if she got money? Why do she care about your because money? Because like women you, you don't date down. You said, you said women. You said women just date for money. Like they do. Women do not date down. That's why they will always date a dude equal. Just because listen, Beyonce would deal with everything that Jay. Most of the stuff that Jay Z do yeah, to her. I was about to go right back. Could want to tell you why? Because Jay Z is the top one percent. She's not, most women at any level are not willing to date dudes beneath, beneath their level. Look, check this so, out. Hold on, let me finish. Go ahead, go ahead. So the more money that a woman makes, she's still going to try to date a dude higher than her, which also resets everything and put it back where that. So if she's making 100000 she's not going to date another nigga that make 100000 or less. She's nine times out of 10 looking for somebody that's, 500,000 or more. She's women do that's why Beyonce can leave Jay-Z and she may not ever get married again unless she's find somebody that's Jay-Z level or higher. She's not going to walk into Walmart or into Golden Corral and see a fine nigga behind the camera and say, counter and say let me change your life, but I bet you Jay-Z would if he got divorced from Beyonce and he fucking walked in Waffle House mm -hmm. and he saw the cashier she fine as hell. She cute as hell. He would take her out of there and upgrade her life. But it would most of the time it would never happen the opposite way around. Women do not date down. Most, not all, not all, not all. But most women would not date down or equal. Most women only date up. I mean, we all have our personal standards. But, you know, we, we could say that the same thing as fellas. Like, like you were just saying, if you a boss, you don't want to date no needed woman. You know, so people don't really want to date like that's You know, we can't just put that on gender like women don't want to date now. No, we Nobody. can't put it on gender because men can date down. Men can be a billionaire and literally go find but a chick in a hood and change same, her But life. at the same time with Jay-Z being who he is, say he doesn't have, say if he didn't have, if he's still Jay-Z, but he's got zero dollars in his bank account, Beyonce still going gonna to rock with him. Yeah, because she with him now, but if she never met Jay-Z and he saw her and he had zero, it's not happening. It's not, if she's who she is. I mean, but he, it, it, like, you can possess other qualities Bro, besides money. That, no, money that just ain't, women just ain't, just are about everything. security. There's other stuff that woo women besides money. Bro, I'm telling you. Like, and money, then what I'm saying, like, feel, it's about feeling. You that's know what I'm a lie. You, if you can give a if you can give a woman feeling like fuck her good, like fuck the shit out of her good, that's more. She that, gonna that might work for she a gonna appreciate that way more than any most money no, that you sir. could give her. Because what they say, um, pound town leads to ultrasounds. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh man, bro. Emotions and feelings are things that is used naturally to manipulate us to create families. Yeah. So women will use feelings and emotions to manipulate you because what they want is commitment. Yeah. But the reason why they want commitment because commitment brings security. That means if I get you to commit to me, not only do I have you emotionally, mm -hmm. not only do I have you physically, but I also have you financially. The number one of divorces is financial. And the number one people who file for divorces are women. Women are paid to keep men out of the household child support. A woman will go get a baby by a nigga she just met the first night, but it felt like he got some money. She's going to keep it for the money. The women go get money for themselves. Niggas go get money for women. I don't care who you are. Nah. Not all, not all, not all, not, but I'm most. Glad, I'm glad you said that, Big because D. Because you get because fried, Because, because you as, get, a, as a hustler, Big D, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you, when you trying to come up, like, you not going to hustle all day just to give your money to somebody. I didn't say give it. I mean, we're tricking. I ain't saying tricking. You getting your money for women. Because you go put on dope clothes. Do you go get put on fly ass clothes? No, I don't put, that, I don't put that shit on. But when don't you put that shit on, do you shit. go put it on for it your make partners? Me, cause it make, no, because it, it, make, it make me Yeah, but your good. validation comes from when a chick say, hey, he look good. Because you're not a trick. No, hell Hold no. Hold on. You're not a trick. You're used to pulling things off of your look and your charisma. Thanks. And that's what... 
And because that feel good, you understand, let me put on, you're presenting yourself, yourself a certain way. Because we know. Because I like the feel. Because I like the feel. I'm not saying you don't like the feeling of it. Yeah. But you do that shit for your, you do it, it is a fulfillment for yourself, but can't tell me, bro, if you pulling up, you fly as hell, your cut is fresh, you got on some fresh clothes that you just going to sit in the house on the bed and it's like, you know what, goddamn, I look good. I'm going to sit here, I ain't going nowhere. Nah, I'm going to sit, no, nah, nah, at the same I know. time, like, I done worn bad bitches I, I, it don't in matter. a white beater in a, That's in a goddamn do-rag That's and, you know, just pretty much giving them what I'm giving them, my time. I feel you. But again, when you get that fresh cut, that fresh fade, and you throw, put that shit on, yeah. you're not sitting in the house in front of the mirror just looking at yourself like, yep, I look good. It ain't that. Oh, no, 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 no. Tell me you do it. If you tell me, I will shut up. But I'm about to, you I'm can't about tell to, me. I'm about to shut you up. Because I'm, it ain't for them. It's for me. Like, the, what, what drove me to be an artist, Big D, is like, at some point, I felt like, damn, I do like to give fly, but what am I doing it for? So once I had something to do it for, like that, that coincides what I'm doing with music and the entertainment. Now I got a reason to be fly. That's not for somebody else, you know. That's for that's for me, you know. Like like Beyonce say, I know that I never disappoint myself. You know, my grandma used to say it too. Everybody ain't gonna like you. So I'm not, you know, putting that shit on to to make people look at me. I'm yeah, I'm putting that shit why. on to because it make me feel good. Growing up, Big D, you know what I'm saying. I used to wear hand-me-downs. I used to wear my big cousin hand-me-downs and my big brother hand-me-downs. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we'd even share drawers. So when I, once I got it, you know what I'm saying, paper in my pocket, and I can go, you know, put that shit on, you know, it ain't, it ain't it's for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it can't be for you, but part of being for you is when you put that shit on and you feeling good that you can put that shit on and then you step out. And you feeling like them eyes is on yeah. you because you put that shit on, even for yourself. That's even when the chick's looking at you. Yeah. And they, it's still for yourself. But we getting this shit because the more money you got, the more access you have to the type of women you want. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It makes it easier. I'm not saying you you could be handsome and but still get thing a lot of be like, I'm I would much, I have traditional values and beliefs. I want to be with one woman and have a wife. So I'm not trying to please every woman in the world. If I could just please one woman, and I know this woman is pleased yeah. with me, with me being me, how I present myself. Yeah. Like I'm good with that. People like you want to get more money. Sure, you want to live. You know, you want to have an abundant life. You want to live prosperously, and you yeah. need money to do so. But that don't mean I need more money to to appeal to. You know, like well, like I said, I'm an introvert. I don't even like people. Say, it's I cool. So I'm not saying you need it. I'm saying that, but when you do have access to more money, it gives you more access to even more. Thanks. So even if you say, hey, I'm a handsome dude, and you stay around the city, you might pull a lot of chicks. But when you get more money, you might not could go to France. Hey. And you pull a lot more chicks in France. You may be able to go to Brazil now. Money opens up more options and most women not all not all not all but most want a nigga that got some bread i don't care who it is a woman would date you and know that you hunting squirrels and they cool with you having them squirrels but to the day a nigga walk in the room who hunt whales whoa that nigga with squirrels better watch all out. Right, look check this out the women want future or they want russell wilson they they will they they will take either one because they both got money Okay, so when we so we, if we take the X factor out, money, we take that out. What do these guys have left? I know now it's just coming all about who, what's they style, what they like, right? Because not every woman gonna be able to handle a nigga that's lovey dovey. That shit might be boring to them. I watched them niggas get dogged out. Right. Them niggas is ooh baby, baby, baby. He's just you, baby. And them motherfuckers get dogged out. And it be the nigga like Future dogging these chicks out, and they hanging on tooth and nail trying to prove themselves. But see, what I'm saying is women don't just want money, man. Like, they want the peace in in, in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, money. The number one but cause you said, of fu divorce. Fu future, future and Russell Wilson both got money, so you, we excluding it. But what I'm saying is. If Future is, got all these women and you he making you cry and causing, causing you memory, misery, you ain't got no peace. You ain't going to really want to be with Future. But if you got Russell Wilson over here, you know, and he, uh, 
fulfills all your fantasies and all that type of shit, you know what I'm saying, giving you shit that you can't feel. I mean, I mean, giving you shit that, you know what I'm saying, that you can feel that you ain't necessarily got to touch. Like, I mean, again, it comes oh, yeah. down... When it's on equal playing field, it comes down to the woman's taste and yeah. what she look at as a man. But if you said a fair thing to say is if Future had all the money, he is who he is, yeah. and Russell Westbrook being a great guy that he, I mean, Russell Wilson being a great guy that he is, but he just a youth pastor, yeah. no NFL <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah, They're going for Future. Now, they might get there, and with Future having all the money that he has, it buys patience for them to deal with whatever bullshit he's willing to get dish out yeah. because they want the lifestyle. If you want peace, it starts with money. Again, number I hate to say it, but again, the number one cause of divorce is financial. Yeah. And the number one fowlers for divorce are women. So if you put the two together, women are divorcing men first because of financial situations. Second is infidelity. Women want money. Even <laughs> don't don't. I'm telling you, bro. It's it, don't get it twisted. If you want kids, that takes money. Yeah, I mean, you, your it's, woman want to cool, go on trips. It's cool to want money, like. You should want money. Like, you just, honestly, you should want money. I just feel like I'm like, busting I feel like bubble. women, what, what's money? You want, I want you to think about the inheritance. What these kids going to get? You know what I'm saying? It ain't no, if it ain't no money, it ain't no inheritance. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> It that ain't was, no trips. But that's it ain't no, no family vacations. It ain't no buying nice ain't no, stuff. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no knock on getting money. It's just, I just don't think... Women just hide out about the money because they they be getting their own money. Fair. Like that's what excited me to see a woman get her own. Yeah, money. nigga. But unless you getting more than her, she's not looking your fucking way. Man, that's cap. I, I'm telling you, I, I I get it, bro. You no homo. You a handsome dude. It ain't, it ain't even. But if it's a chick that. out here that's a lawyer, that's making three hundred, four hundred thousand, you're not even in the room to where she's at. Look, I'm telling you. They make BET movies about it all the time. Then again, that, notice what you just said. It's a, it. it's a goddamn then, movie. Man. <laughs> Show me somebody, in, multiple people in real life. Don't give me an outlier because I'm not saying it's impossible. Remy and Pat Poof. I'm, I'm not saying it's impossible. It's a, it's a lot, it's a but lot of people. But they grew together. You know Remy wasn't always above Pat Poof. They grew together. She just be, eventually became a bigger star after they were already together. That's different. Bobby and Whitney. Bobby and Whitney. Bobby was a star. That's how he was able to get in yeah, the room. Yeah, but he didn't have her money. It, he was a star. He was. A, he had clout. He at that time he, he was like a, the sexiest he, man in. I mean, in what? Um, in exactly. music at that he time. had other things. He, he had other things. But what that I'm wasn't saying just about his money. But he had clout. He was already an entertainer. He was already moving in a trajectory like that lawyer. If you, if you're the future number one draft yeah. pick, if everybody know that you're about to get drafted number one in April. Yes, that chick who making five hundred thousand will give you a chance yeah. because you see that eventually you're about to hit that precipice. But it's so like, they would deal with that. It's like my dad was saying, you know, you don't necessarily have to. If a woman don't like you, you ain't gotta, you ain't have to please her. So if a woman starts to talk to you, you should talk about what she's talking about. So say, for instance, we, I am in a room with a a woman who makes substantially way more money than what I make. I'm not intimidated by by that at all. It's not you're not supposed to. Nobody's telling you to be intimidated. I don't think, I don't, and I don't think an alpha uh, man, uh, alpha male should. It, it's not even about that. And alpha male shit is made up. That's just ego shit. At the end of the day, we're just talking about probability. We're talking about facts. It's not about what you think or how you feel and what I think or how I feel. Again, yeah. the number one cause of divorce, factually, is financial. Number two is infidelity. The number one filers of divorce are women. That in itself will tell you that if you took majority of the marriages around the United States and you figure out why they they the marriages fail, it's because the women left because of financial situations. You know what, Big D? When I was a kid, I used to see people in like on their second, third marriages. I used to wonder, like, damn, why they keep on getting married? Like at the same time. Yeah, people break up because of money. Because if if you spending, I would feel so hurt if a person was spending my hard earned money, and 
I didn't agree with their choice making on, on how they spent it. So, yeah, of course that's going to call a split or in record in record side little difference. Uh, yeah. So, at the end of the day, reason uh, people are delusional like you. <laughs> they want fairy tale and butterfly ass shit. And that's not the reality of marriage. Reality be harsh. Marriage yeah, yeah. is business. Business. Yeah. Business. 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 Yeah. When you enter into marriage, that's all it's about. If your business is out the out of whack, it ain't no romance. Yeah. If you can't fucking pay the rent, it ain't no fucking. <laughs> if you can't, the electric bill overdue and it's about to get cut off, it ain't no romance. Yeah. It's business. So until you get the business, which is money, in order, the romance is out the door. However, when you date, you can go straight to finance. Why? Because you're not in business. Your money is your money. Her money is her money. Y'all not coming together to do business. Y'all coming together to have fun, to drink, to fuck, and play (laughs) games. And then what y'all do is say- But to me, like that, that shit is delusional. How in the hell are we just going to just fuck and, you know what I'm saying, go out and just do this and have no no sense of business? And how, you know, how will we Yeah, even- bro, who's fucking be like, oh, my God, you know what? <laughs> I saw a property in the mail the other day. This is, nobody think like Say that, bro. Nah, well, when, we, when we get done fucking, you better mention a property that you've seen Come earlier. On, bro. You that, know what I'm saying? Is, Especially if I'm spending... Is- I'm, like I'm saying, I'm spending my time and spending my resources. Business. You knows what you're saying. Time and resources. This so, is, yeah. So it's, it's business. I, like, no, okay, I got I got a partner. You know what I'm saying? Nigga have meaningless sex all the time. And I'm like, bro. That's fine. You know, okay, it can fuck you up psychologically. No, it can't. Yes, you can. Because if you've been fucking with this girl, you know what I'm saying? She's a, she a, she's a hoe. You know what I'm saying? She, you know what I'm saying? She been getting her money, and she ain't just started with you. So she done been through some shit that psychologically fucked her up that got her selling ass. And here you go fucking her. You don't think that that shit gonna rub off on you? All women are selling ass. Is what I'm telling you. <laughs> all women and ain't all, selling. Yes, they are. Man, I got it. women are selling ass for love. Women are selling ass for dates. Going out eating. Hoping that they get in a relationship. At all times, you're exchanging money or you're exchanging time. But you are giving some type of currency for yourself. You're giving up time or money. Which currency are you spending? I value my time more than my money. So I could give you the money. Because I can go out to eat and spend $200. Easy. By yourself. So here go, boom. If that's what you want, $200, and I can get to what I'm trying to get to, and then skedaddle and move on about my time because I want to do other stuff, not sit here and act like I'm really that's that cool. interested. That, that just means you should date women with, with money versus women with money. I'm not trying money. to, but see, that's the thing. You're not trying to date. Now, it's different when you're trying to date because when you say you're trying to date somebody, you're looking for a business partner. You're looking for someone you can invest in each other into this life and build an empire. That's different when you're dating, when you're looking to date. You're looking to build. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a nut, by no means should you approach (laughs) a nut as a business deal. Because then you would fuck around to being something you ain't never want to be in. Just show up and pay, get your nut off, and move on. But But what I'm saying is... Sometimes paying for that nut is bad business. No. Because if you're paying your, for your nut, usually you're paying it from a sex worker. And usually that sex worker understand that bring condoms and that if I get sick, I can't make no money. So they treat their body a lot better because their I'm, body is a but business. What I'm saying, okay, sure they may treat their they body right, but what about they what about they mental? I'm not there for their mental. I'm here for a nut. It affects you. Like no, you- it don't. Here go my money. If this the kind of like, if this the kind of yes, it does affect your mental because it's like you got to be able to like you were talking about how uh, about women. It's like it was like so, sort of degrading. I got to think about my mamas and sisters and cousins. And they were selling but, pussy too, like, man. At the same time, we don't want to. We don't want to. We don't want to mention that. But just because you <laughs> don't want to, because you don't want to mention it. Doesn't mean it's not true. Just because oh, you stick your head in the middle of, in the dirt in the middle of the Bro. road, a car coming don't mean that car is gonna stop coming. It is what it is. Granddaddy was but buying what I'm pussy. Is Grandmama the, the was women, selling. The women. Okay, now that now that you, I, 
You keep paying for these women, you objectifying these women. That's all you see them as. It's just like, you know what I'm saying, if you always on Pornhub, you know what I'm saying, you see naked bitches all the time. Mm -hmm. If you go to the club, like me, I, I'm a club go. I go yeah. to the strip club often. You know, you see naked bitches all the time, you know what I'm saying, it make, it's common. You gonna, that's what you used You're to. You're gonna objectify, right? Because these aren't, you only objectify what you're not trying to build with. Man... It's only your woman that you're trying to build with when you start to really, uh, really see her as the woman, woman of your life. Don't get me wrong, Big D. You finna make me say some crazy shit. Say the crazy shit. I like hoes, but I don't really condone hoe shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I like, condone it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I mean, if you're a man that can go out here and <laughs> destroy your body to play football, I mean literally get paralyzed, tear ACLs, barely yeah. can walk, and make millions, why can't she sell pussy? She's doing less damage than this dude out here putting on his helmet, cracking his head up against other men. See, it'd be, it be crazy. Way like, more damage from football. I, like sometimes, Big D, I'll be honest with you. You could probably relate to this. I'm going to put it like this. You ever, you was finna get some ass, but it just seemed like you couldn't, couldn't get your shit hard. Yeah, I've been there. This happened to you before. Yeah. And you, you one of them niggas, baby, you got to top me. You know, they get tired of yeah. them niggas. Like, I'm the opposite of that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Them, them hoes be telling me, I only do it for you. You know what I'm saying? That's the, you know what I'm saying, the difference. But at the same time, like. And you believe it. Go ahead. That's shit. Flo whatever floats <laughs> your boat. Yeah, but, you believe <laughs> it. Okay. But, uh. But yeah, T made me lose my train of thought. High side, glad as shit. But uh, fuck Big D. <laughs> I'm saying, man. At the end of the day, I don't care what you say. Pussy has been sold, and pussy is being bought. As a man, you're just determining what currency are you using. Are you using? Yeah, money yeah. Okay, back to back time? to okay. Excuse me. Back to where. Uh, so you can't get your shit hard. That means it's a. You know what I'm saying? What's attracting you to her? Like before I ever touch a woman's body. I'm gonna seduce her mind first. I'm trying to see Man, what. Shut that shit up. I'm trying to see what she into. I'm trying to see what she Hell into. No. Where did you meet? Did you just meet her on the telephone and ain't never saw no, her before? Bro, you just like, heard her voice. Okay. Do you want a a bad bitch? You know what I'm saying with a good mind, or you want a bad bitch that's a you want a bad bitch that can't think? Well, it depends on what I'm trying to do. Like Again, if I know you can't, if, if I know if build, I know you can't think, I can't get my shit hard for you. What we gonna do? What kind of positions we gonna? Nigga, fuck, so what fuck you in the bat? You in the in the fucking uh, bed asking her mathematical equation? It's like nah, baby, what's pop? Nah, not necessarily. Wrong answer. Not, you know what? I can't do this shit. You like don't yeah, know like pie. if she sometimes like certain women don't be mentally like you gotta actually do some fucking big D. Some certain women don't be uh don't have the mental stay for you. Know what I'm saying. Oh, so while you're fucking, you're having conversations. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta no, talk, you gotta talk. No, are you having orgasm. conversation? That's why women, that's why women be saying you're, you're, you're that they don't be getting their orgasm. You're switching the conversation. Because yeah, you gotta talk to her. No, you switching the conversation. We're talking about an intelligent conversation to understand how intelligent she is. Because yeah. what you're saying is the you're her mind, The way that her mind gets. And you figure that out the way, during The way that her treasure gets. And like, this is, you know what I'm saying? This is from experience, you, you, like getting, again, getting you're, women you're, you're, you're moving the goalposts. That's not what we're talking about. Let's be logical and let's be rational. Let's land. Let's come back to the earth and get grounded. <laughs> we here. We're not gonna do no magical, we mythical here. talk or metaphorical or allegorical talk. We're gonna we talk here. exactly. So, at what point? Because I, I, I give I'm it not, to you. I, I put it like this: If it's a woman that I'm building with, I always use the saying: It's the physical that tracks, but it's the personality that keeps. As a man, usually most women we see, we're physically attracted with her, to her, because it's natural. You see a body you like, again, that's a snapshot for us. She's healthy. They, well, not they, necessarily, because you see niggas, no. you see niggas with, you know what I'm saying, ugly chicks and shit all the time. Yeah, but and usually- it's because they can connect with each other. ugly is your idea what ugly is. I mean, because he, he could connect right, with Right, but ugly is your idea what ugly is. It may not be ugly to him. Yeah. Most people, it's hard for them to date somebody that's ugly to them. Because somebody could be fine. What I was about to say is it's the physical that, that attracts, but it's the personality that keeps. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I came across women physically was fine as hell. Yeah. And I, if but she what, but what were their mental like? But that's what I was about to say. Let me answer. And it's true. But these are usually women I wanted to pursue. Like, she fine as hell. Then you get to talking to her. Then she start talking. You be like, hell no. Nah. I ain't touching this chick. I ain't right. fucking this chick. Because you realize 
uh, I don't like her. That right. that happens, but usually you find that out about somebody you're trying to possibly pursue. What I'm saying, like even like I was saying, like even before you get ready to fuck and you can't get your shit hard, is because y'all y'all mentally incompatible. That's not true. Like it, it, you, you got like you like got, you saying, are, are you are you talking to your woman? Uh, during the sex or after no, the sex, sometimes, yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, I'm talking to. Her. We talking to each other. You sometimes know your dick can't get up because it can't get up. Sometimes your dick can't. No, get, it, I'm it, just your saying. dick can't get up because you shouldn't be fucking this girl. But no, that ain't always true. I mean, that could be true. That's true. That, mentally, you can have some type of shame and guilt, and you're not attracted. I, check, I've check been this there. Out, it's Big been D. chicks. I was with this one chick. You know, her physique is bad. You know, like yeah. she she built like a stripper, but she has sort of a slight. Speech impediment, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I ain't just prejudiced, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm kicking and shooting the shit with her, but I could not just get over the speech impediment. She was bad, though. And then, so, she was like, are we going to do this or what? And I just thought to myself, I'm like, man, if I fuck this girl, I'm going I'm going to hell, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, mean, just, I, I, peel, I peel that. You know what I'm, I, I'm, I'm not saying... I'm not saying that guys, we're just that savage that everything is only physical with us. I'm, all I'm saying is that depending on what we see our intent is for that girl. Well, whether we just were for, not, you, you, you talked about me with reality, reality for you. We were not meant to have meaningless sex. Boom. Yes, we were. Religion has taught you that you weren't, but it depended on your religion because if you look at most cultures, that's not, a Abrahamic religion like Muslim look, or Christianity. Look, yeah, Hold on. Gotta... I'm just saying. Most cultures, men are polygamous. Men are usually can have as many mates as they can afford. And when does that ever end well? Like that's just like the story of the story of the drug dealing gangster. When does that story ever but end that, well that, when the men when the men like typically when men have multiple women, when has that like ever like been successful? Every time I done seen it. Like, I done seen the yeah, man. Yeah, but look at what you said. The, 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 notice what you said. The even, gangsta, like, hold on, listen to the with occupation. Greek, like with Greek mythology, like all the all the, the gods, even when they had Notice their, what you just said. Mythology is not real. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a myth. <laughs> it came from somewhere. It's, it, it's a myth. Myths it's just have, a story. Myths have some type it's of just truth to them or they won't mean no, shit. No, it's just, it's called a myth, meaning it's made up. All right, why? It's why, just a story. All right, I'm going to say it like this. Why is the joke funny? Because you can understand the joke and why it's funny. If the joke ain't, the joke ain't funny, if you don't understand the shit, you know what but that's that's fair. But notice the the first example you gave but with myths. The first they have some truth. I, I mean, anything. Spider Man has some truth, right? It's shot in New York. New York really exists. Does that fucking mean that Spider Man really exists in New York right now? No. Yeah. <laughs> Donald Trump was in Home Alone too. <laughs> Does it mean that the movie is real? No. But still, so man. what I'm saying is, at the end of the day, regardless of what you do mm-hmm. in life, when it comes to women, you're going to always spend money. You have to just decide what type of currency are you going to spend. Yeah. Is it going to be your money or your time, which is more valuable to you. And that's what you're going to choose to spend. When you go to the strip club and you have a good time with the strippers, I, you gonna I, throw seen, a little I seen bit? somebody say it the other day. Uh, I spend my money on you if I love you. If I don't love you, I love, I love money. So if I don't love you, I won't spend my money on you. Well, I say that's a lie. Because if you take somebody out on a date, yeah. you just spent your money. If you bring a woman back to your house and you're watching TV, you're spending, you're always spending some type of currency when you're entertaining someone else. Yeah, but all three have to no go buts. inside. The, the money, the time, and the love. So I got to be there. So notice what I said. Love is bullshit. <laughs> but... At the end of the day, again, I don't care how you twist it. I don't care if you're the guy that's the most suave guy in the world that could get every girl to drop her panties off your why conversation. You, All I'm saying, say like at the love end of the day, bullshit. Like, 
That means you make it seem like you ain't never been loved before, Big no, D. No, what I'm saying is. I ain't gonna is, lie to you. you I, what, when what I get I'm around saying, women, sometimes they be rubbing my fade and, call, and and calling me beautiful and stuff. Like a woman ever call you beautiful, Big yeah. D? Yeah, but that's not love. That means she love you. No, that's not love. Like she ain't speaking on like your outside or, or it, you know it, your, it your avatar. That she ain't speaking on what's, what's that on doesn't, inside of you. That she doesn't mean her beautiful. love you. That's just evidence to you that she, you feel like she love her, but you she can't prove her love to you. Can't nobody can nobody prove their love to anybody. That's why we you always know how look, you spend your uh, you know the, how you do that is you spend time. But right, that's why you always give people the evidence. That you uh, love. You, hold on, hold on, look, hold on, remember, listen, you, you hold on, me. listen, hold on. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, because I got, I got uh, something to say. When you say love, you nobody can prove to anybody that they love them. That's why you got to constantly spend time. That's why you got to right. constantly do things to give them the evidence that you love them. If you prove to them that you love them, you never have to do anything else again. Because if it's proven, it's nothing else you need to do. But you can take your girl out on the most romantic, romantic trip ever in life. Mm. But if you come back tomorrow and don't talk to her, your love is now being questioned because the evidence is showing. Although you felt like last night you proved it, yeah. because something is off today, the evidence of you loving her yeah. seems off now. So love cannot be proven. Love is love just... Is, love is... A it is. What what have you done for me lately? That's that's transactional. That's business. I mean, nah, love 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 is not business. It's trans. I mean, if you if you're moving by the method of what have you done for me lately, that's transactional. That is business. That is commerce. You're either you're purchasing or you're bartering. You either you giving something for something or you spending something for something. It doesn't matter. But when you it's transactional, that is business. Yeah, I mean, everything is not just just monetized. You know, it's it's coming with time. Everything is monetized, and that's the best way to be. And what I mean by monetize again, currency. Which one are you spending, money or time? Because at the end of the day, everybody wants just fairness. You don't need love because all love means is whenever I talk to a woman about love or a woman talk, hold on, when a woman talk to a man about love, vice versa, love is trying to get somebody in position to do something that you want for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like a woman say, if you love me, you would do X, Y, and Z or you wouldn't do X, Y, and Z. Love always have to do with the person who's talking about love. It has nothing to do about the person you're talking to about love. Love is just a tool to manipulate a person to get what you You're want. Making me out feel of like you ain't never been loved. I, I, I'm just saying. At the end of the day, love the best thing. I don't need love. Just give me fair. You just want the money. No, it's again, again. See, when are you like, talking about money? If you're talking see, about, look. hold on. When you say money again, are you talking about cash or are you talking about time? All I'm saying is this: I don't have to be fifty fifty. If we're in a relationship, like me and my wife, mm. I don't need 50-50. I just need fair. All right. If I come home, if I've been working all day or doing whatever, the fairness for me is that dinner is ready. I'm cool. If she's been working all day, I'll do dinner. That's the fairness. Today, she might woke up and got the kids ready for school. At night, I get them ready for bath. That's fairness. Forget all the extra stuff. Fair is going to keep us together as long as everybody feel like they're walking away with the equal share of whatever. But I'm pretty is sure if she if if she didn't do her part, you wouldn't love her. And if you would if you slacked up and didn't do your part, she wouldn't love you. But uh, that's just in, in response to what you were saying. But we've heard the cliche: uh, you teach a man. I mean, you you give a man something to eat, he will only eat that day. You teach a man how to fish, and now he can eat every day. And that's where where the love and time factor comes in. Like Prove you, it. How is that love? Because you have to teach somebody. Like, you taking the time out to teach somebody, show somebody this. You know what I'm saying? If you could just give it to them, you know, they only, you didn't, you don't really, you don't really love them. You ain't give them, you didn't give them your time. You remember you asked me about, about my, my father? My father always... Gave the time, gave gave the gave the love. You know, it, it went it went hand in hand together. You know, regardless if he couldn't buy me the uh, if he couldn't buy me 
the new J's or or uh uh the the new laptops or what whatever materialistic things that I wanted as a, as a kid. At the time, see you, you was still you, you still getting hung that, up that, on just financial love. again. Currency is either cash, money, or time. They're both are two different currencies, but both are being spent. You spend money or you spend time or you spend both. But at the end of the day, you spend currency. So which currency did your dad spend with you? Time. I mean, he could have spent, he could have spent. He could have. Like you talked about with, with the date. You know, you could take yourself and go go eat. But why, you know, are you looking for a companion? Because you want the love. You don't want to just... Bro, you're not. When you go out and spending a good time with somebody you just met, that's not love. I, I, I know you do this. You take yourself out on dates? I mean, do I have me time? Yeah, so if that's what you mean no, by I'm dates. Saying, like, you, you, do you take yourself out on dates? Like, do you, do you get dressed, you know... Get fully dressed, go to an event, and you know, socialize. If 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 that's what you define as taking myself out on dates, yeah. if that's how you define it, then I would say, yeah, I don't define it as taking myself out on dates. I'm just going to an event. I don't look at it that way. Yeah. But if you want to look at it, if because you're a romantic type of guy, yeah. I could tell that's just just your thing. So you're gonna always look at your empath. So you're going to always find the emotional side of every situation, yeah. which is cool. For me, I, I don't look for the emotional side of every situation. I just walk away like, how can it be fair? I know that I can, I can maintain as many relationships, regardless if it's sexual, just friendships, business ships, whatever. I know that I can maintain them all if everybody walk away feeling like it was fair. Hey, I mean, that's B, it. you ever had a friend that every time he called, it seemed like he just want money? Or want something. It ain't just got to be money. Want to borrow something, need money, whatever. Yeah. Always need something. Yeah, you, have, yeah. you ever had that type of friend? Yeah. Do you give it to him? Depends. Sometimes, all right? Sometimes. That's out of love, right? Big D. If you if you want to call it out of love, you can say, okay. yeah, I, I would say he okay, look, depends okay, on what okay. it is though. Now look at it from his perspective. You didn't gave it to him. You would think you you think that he would say that's love? Maybe until the next time he calls and I say no. And then I've, gonna been, say, I've been in the type of position, you know, all the time where I was the one being shown the love. So that's how I know, like, you know, you yeah, but that, that shit is fickle. If you only loving somebody because they're giving you something. Or them people will love you once you give them I, something, but, but if but you say no to that, you te- if you teach a man how to fish, you know he he can feed himself. Bro, I, to me that's not love. That's just it benefits you because then they don't have to keep fucking calling you asking you for stuff. Mm. So is it love or was it beneficial for you? You found something in it for yourself. People aren't doing anything without anything in it for themselves. I don't care. Somebody like, man, I gave this away. I ain't want nothing back. Yeah, you probably didn't want nothing back, but you did it because it made you feel good for helping. It was something yeah. in it for you. You taught this man how to fish, not necessarily because you loved him. It's because it made you feel good for helping, and now mm-hmm. you think this dude don't have to call your ass back and keep begging. It doesn't have to be about I know love feels good. It gives this whole romantic high and all this stuff. Man, I get love, it. Love but makes the world go around. No, it don't. Yeah, it do. No, it hum- the world go around by Because if you look if, if you if you look in the media, all we see is chaos, hectic. That's only if that's what you decide to see. You tro- control what you watch. But at the same time, if you if you like I was gonna say, if you look look beneath the surface, you know you can see you was asking me early on about my hood and stuff. You know that's that's what it is. Like we love each other. I mean, no, y'all. I mean, this it, it all depends on perspectives. Yeah. If your your reality, if that's what you call love, that's cool for you. I ain't mad at it. Yeah. I'm just saying, at the end of the day, you can't prove love. You can. You cannot measure it. You can. You can't. Now, what? What? Okay. 
So by 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 effort. What it? No, 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 like, no, no. Like I'm no, saying, okay. No. Say for instance, like, give like me, we, we talk, give we me, talk, hold on, hold on. We, okay. we measure how long something is in foot and centimeters. Okay. We measure electricity that's through that's volts. Facts. Okay, that's math. math what math, okay. what do we that's use facts. to measure love? What is the measurement used for love? Efforts. No. Efforts. No. So scientifically. Yeah, scientifically. Effort. So depending on how much effort it is, objectively for everybody, it means love. So if I put in a thousand efforts, that means it's love across all the right, board look. for every. No, 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 no. All right, look. Yes or no? How many efforts does it take to equal love? I will. Scientifically, not I will. Don't give me your thought. Don't give me your perspective or how you feel. Scientifically. Scientifically, common denominator. I mean, like I'm saying, what have you done for me lately? What do no, you no, keep? No, what no, do you, you keep not, doing? You're not, you're not, you still the work numbers, the, num, the, num, the as the as the numbers increase, if we talk, if we talking about what's factual, no, 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 You saying how can you how can you measure love? You ask me that question. You measure love by effort. Like okay, like so say for instance, if you if you needed something brought to you, but it's two. You got two options. You got somebody that's down the street to bring it to you, and you got somebody that's miles and miles away from you. Who, whoever puts forth the more effort, physics, science, what you talking about, what's factual? They put forth more love in, into Bro, getting that so to if you. If I post this, that would be the dumbest shit ever said. Man. That is not scientific. That it has no relevance. It's not objective, meaning that's, that's the same for every person. Because the anomaly is you can't prove how hard something was for somebody else. You can't tell how much effort somebody else had to make to get there. All right, we talking about, we talking about dating. You know what I'm saying? Say, for instance, we, we supposed to meet at the same location. Mm -hmm. But you stand me up. You don't show up. The, the chick. The chick. The chick yeah. don't show up. She stand me Pause. up. Pause. We well, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that means that she don't she don't like me as much as I thought. Notice what you said. As but, much. That's not a fact then, because you said she don't like me as much as I thought. That means it's not a fact. It's just your reality of how you perceiving it. Because she may like you a lot, but the way that she likes doesn't resonate with how you right, think you right, should well, be liked. Well, well, Big D, I I give it to you. That was the dumbest shit I ever said because you can't mix opinions and facts and opinions are based off of feelings and love is a feeling. So there you go. There you go, my man. We learned something today. <laughs> Bravo, we done round this up. I think this is going to be a great interview. They're going to say me an asshole. I'm an asshole <laughs> and I don't let people talk. Hey, but I still love you, though. Hey, man, I appreciate it. I love you, too, bro. <laughs> hey, what, what can people go check out right now? What projects and music out right now? Man, I'm finna get re ready to release a single called Perfect Match. Uh, you can look for that. Uh, Ride With Me is still hot in the streets. Uh, Lil Fella, Freestyle is on, uh, still going up. You can find me on Instagram, Low Key Celebrity. You know, that's the brand. You know, one day I'm going to have people all across the nation calling themselves Low Key Celebrity. So remember, well, you heard it first, Hey, my man. Well, hey, little Quincy, bro. You always welcome here. Great conversation, man. Until we meet again. Peace. Peace.